agenda on, on the 99. <laughs> so everyone else, you know, obviously they are in different, uh, with different goals, you know, some drivers, they, they don't care about anything but they win. Some other drivers want to get points like ourselves. And, uh, and yeah, so we, we have to make sure that we were still in the striking distance. Do you have one-on-one -on -one conversations with other Chevy drivers to see if they're going to be your friends on Sunday on the track? No, not yet. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow. I was going to ask, what are some of the challenges of trying to execute a plan like that where you have strategy, where you're wor working with your teammates, working with other Chevy drivers? How tough is it to stick with that plan and when do you have to kind of change up if, you, if yeah. things happen? Yeah, listen, uh, it's, it's, it's definitely a little bit tricky, but uh, you know, we are we're stronger together. So we have to work together as long as we can. Uh, but at the end of the day, we also are competing against each other. So we have to just be smart uh, and, and try to uh, to try to to help each other up front. You know, it's, it's, it's way easier to work together up front than in the back. So we see how things play out. You know, with my experience here, every time that we come with 10 different plans, uh, there, there is something always different showing up in the race. You know, there is so many different scenarios and different things that are going to happen tomorrow that we're not even thinking about. So we just have to be smart and, uh, and trying to uh, good, like, have a good execution day. Have you studied the changes to the role yet for the elimination race? And what effect do you think they will have? Yeah, I mean, I did. I did quite a bit already. Uh, we, I've been putting a lot of work into, into that race. Uh, on, sim, on sim? Yeah, on and off sim. And uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to be different uh, for sure. I think that it's going to create maybe uh, maybe a passing zone right there, you know, in that hairpin. Um, the front the, the front straightaway chicane is, uh, is way more pronounced. Um, so that one, I think, is, is going to create also a better passing zone because you're going to have to slow down more. But in reality, you know, right now we are living in the virtual world. So uh, <laughs> nobody has been it. It's been in it in real life. So we, we're really going to find out next weekend. That uphill, uh, that uphill corner, which they've changed from the uh, where it, where it comes back to turn one, where it now goes uphill toward the hairpin. Mm -hmm. uh, this, that's going to be an interesting corner, I think, where where you really don't see the um, you don't see the apex of the corner <laughs> until until you have to break, right? Yeah, at least at least in the simulator is that way. Uh, but uh, but yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. I, I'm actually. I'm happy, you know, I'm happy that uh, that uh, SMI and, uh, and everyone in NASCAR is allowing these kind of changes because if you think about it, you know, we've been racing already the Robo for a handful of years and it's been amazing, you know, we, we, we all have enjoyed it so much. But a little, a little change like this always, uh, in my mind, it spice things a little bit. So I'm happy, I'm happy that uh, we, we are always continue to, to think outside the box a little bit. I think this makes the, the sport uh, excited. That's good as if you've been at Atlanta three top threes in the past three races. How do you translate that over to uh, Talladega? Well, hopefully a little better than that. Um, you know, Talladega and Daytona both, you know, it's one of those tracks that we're always right, running up front, you know. Um, we're always running up front when we get into accidents. You know, last time that we were here, I was running inside inside the top five, top seven, when we got into a wreck coming to the checkers. Uh, so, you know, I always tell my team, if we're going to wreck, we're going to wreck in the top five. And I'm okay with that, but uh, I don't like wrecking when I'm running 20th. So we have to just continue to put ourselves in, in, in good positions and eventually things are going to play out our way. But I feel like, especially in the last couple of years, I feel like I have learned a lot of what I need to do and not to do in these uh, super speedway races. How have you, this time around, I know it happens throughout the season, but just the ups and downs, I mean, the last two weeks. It's been tough, eh? Been fun. <laughs> I mean, you know, in Bristol, Bristol was tricky. Bristol, I knew it, it, it was it was gonna be a challenge, uh, just because uh, in Bristol for a few years now, it's been it's been a it's been a tough track for track house. Uh, the one and myself, we tried different things, and uh, luckily the one was able to hit on something decent. He he didn't have a speed to win the race, but at least he ran close to the top ten. And the ninety-nine, we just. We just didn't have speed. We didn't, we didn't have speed in practice. We didn't have speed in qualifying. We didn't have speed in the race. So we're just slow. And uh, in, in Bristol, we we just didn't do a good job at all. And in Kansas, Kansas was a completely different story because in Kansas on Saturday we had a very good car. I would say a pretty good car, top ten car. And and we just missed it. We just didn't do a good job overnight. You know, for I mean, we were we went from in stage one from running eight 
to go a lap down. I mean, the car, we just missed it. Uh, so that, that's a part that we still have some work to do. You know, just we just have to be more more consistent and more uh, reliable with uh, with our calls. Sometimes from one day to another, sometimes from practice to qualifying, things like that. But uh, overall in Kansas, I felt like the potential of the car was there. We just didn't execute it properly uh, on Sunday. Uh, we were able to make it better. You know, by the end of the race, actually, we were a top 10 car, but it took us three quarters of the race to get there. And, and that's that's not acceptable. You know, I missed stage points, obviously. So we finished 13 with a car that in my mind could have run top 10, get stage points. and. Uh, and the way that things work out, honestly, we could have even fought for the win. I think my car was as good as the one, and he won the race. So, um, so yeah, we just have to do a better job. So how did you not? Hey, Chase, you talked about um, just how much you, you felt you performed better under these back against the wall scenarios. There's a lot of points on the board this weekend and next weekend, but are you there yet where you feel like this might be a must win? I don't feel like it's a must win. Um, you know, especially just with this place, you can swing a ton of points really, really quickly. And, you know, even if we just have a decent day, like those other guys can have horrendous days. So I think you're going to know, obviously, leaving here where you're at from that standpoint. But, yeah, I don't I don't feel like it's a must win right now. Um, you know, the last race or last round, we were out 21 after the first race, and we made it by 11. And this one, we're only out 25. So, yeah, I don't feel like it's a must win by any means. You know, it is a little trickier just with it being Talladega and a little more out of your control but um, at the same time that does create a little bit of opportunity just because a lot of guys can lose a lot of points really quickly so just got to be really really aggressive tomorrow and try to get our track position obviously that's going to be a little bit tougher starting where we're at now but um, yeah I think you just got to have an open mindset going into it and, and just be really aggressive. You mentioned the the starting position but the Fords have been fast with the Penske's as well as you've got the three other teammates that have been working together throughout the playoffs uh, how confident do you feel you'll be able to get up and score some stage points tomorrow? Yeah I mean the Fords have always been really good here and all the super speedways right so I know that our cars will be pretty good um, so yeah I'm not really too worried about it truthfully this play, especially at the beginning tomorrow I mean Everybody's going to be saving fuel so hard. You can probably drive the lead in two laps if you want to. So um, just going to be one of those games of who can save the most fuel at the beginning and, and kind of leapfrog track position. And obviously our job is a little bit harder just because we're going to have to burn a little bit more fuel to get up there. But yeah, I'm not, not really worried about it. Of all the places to qualify, 30th or whatever we did, this is the one to do it. Is there buy-in from your teammates to do whatever it takes? To, they want to win too, but like, yeah. is there buy-in to get you in the position you need to be? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I mean, it's tough, right? Like, them guys are all still racing to, to win too. So, I know at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, like they're going to do what's best for them, and, and they should. Um, but I, I do think, you know, in the stages and things like that, if they can find certain opportunities to help me or, you know, even take points away from other people, that's just as big of a deal. So, um, yeah, I think so. You know, we haven't had that discussion as far as a company goes. We're, we'll do that tomorrow morning, just kind of the plan going into tomorrow. But, um, yeah, I think, you know, we all kind of know what's at stake, right? So they're going to do everything they can. But at the end of the race, I don't I don't expect anything you know, special. It's constantly being against the wall to even make the playoffs, in the playoffs in the first round, in the second round. Is this exhausting? Like, do you feel like it's taking a further toll than it would otherwise? No, not really. I'd rather have it this way, truthfully. You know, I've never really been on the other side of it in the Cup Series, but the Xfinity side, you know, that year when we won all those races, I thought that was way more exhausting just because there's this expectation from everybody for you to, to be the guy, right? So I would much rather have it the other way. And obviously I'd love to, to be nine wins in, you know, this year, but I do think from an exhausting standpoint, it's it's more exhausting the other way. You know, you look at like what Denny or, or you know, Larson or whoever's gone through, it's like – it's just nonstop. There's the conversation, right, where we can kind of fly under the radar a little bit more. How's the family doing? Uh, good so far. She, uh, is so far so good. Uh, she was texting me a second ago saying she's she's had pressure today. So, yeah, the C-section's Tuesday morning. So, hopefully she can make it to that air and uh, make my job a lot easier this weekend if she can just keep them in there. Are you going back to North Carolina tonight? Uh, it honestly just depends on, on, you know, how she's feeling and, the earliest plane I can get on is after the Xfinity race, and it sounds like it won't even land in Concord till like 11 o'clock, and then our flight leaves at 6 a.m. the next. So I don't know. I'd only be home four or five hours. So I don't know what the plan is, just kind of based on how she feels right now. Have there been any close calls this week? <coughs> Not this week. Nah, nothing this week. Last week we went to the hospital that one day, but. Yeah, nothing this week. So I know you mentioned that it's not exhausting to you know, be in the playoffs, but does this add sort of a sense of anxiety having to deal with the family stuff on top of playoff racing? No, not really. I mean, I'm pretty even-killed and easy going all the time. It, uh, yeah, nah, 
uh, I don't really get any anxious over it at all. Here to give you guys even more speed this year. No, it's hard to say. I mean, I feel like the the Fords have obviously been been really quick, especially this year with the with the dark horse Ford Mustang at these tracks, and um, you know, just been able to execute well and have really fast race cars. So, um, you know, has that resulted in a race win yet? No. Um, so yeah, there's still still work to do and, and still uh, still room to improve. You guys uh, obviously have a lot of points on the table this week and next week, and you've been great at super speedways, and you need to run well. Do you feel like you're at a must win yet, or are you just looking for a, a really good run to, or tomorrow? Yeah, I'd certainly like to leave here and not feel like I'm in a must win for, for the Charlotte Road Course. Uh, so I, I think a lot of that is in our hands, but at the same time, uh, the unpredictability of, of how this racing is, you know, you don't want to look at a plate race as somewhere where you relying on going to gain a bunch of points. So, but that's the, that's where we're at. And, um, look, I, I think we're just capable as anybody of doing it. So, um, just gotta, gotta put it together tomorrow and, and have the right things happen. We saw how well you all and the Fords work together at Atlanta. Um, have you all had any meetings or are you just expected to be the same tomorrow as well? I think the expectation is a lot of the same. I mean, there's, there's kind of meetings on Sunday morning and be able to, to kind of talk through things and, you know, how things change or maybe mentalities change and, and, and see how we can all gel together and obviously keep, uh, keep, the, keep the blue holes up front. And then uh, talk, Chase was talking about dealing with the pressure, and he said he, he enjoys it a little bit more because the guys, Denny and uh, Byer and Larson, that they have more of the conversation and the pressure. Do you feel any pressure, and how do you deal with that, if so? Uh, I don't know. I can't, can't say I've really thought about it, so I guess not. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Thank you. Where are you on Roval Prep, and have you had a chance to kind of get a preview of what you're going to see next week? Yeah, no, I've definitely um, definitely gotten a bit of a preview. I, I kind of walked over the speedway after playing some golf on uh, on Thursday and kind of saw what was going on there and done some laps uh, on, on the sim kind of in prep um, for, for next week. Obviously, um, kind of won't get to see the, the finished product until until we get there for the track walk on uh, on the weekend. But, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. A change, change will be interesting. Um, personally, I hated the old turn eight just from my own personal experience, just not for how it raced, but just more – was my worst corner on the racetrack, so I'm, uh, I'm cool with the changes. Starting second, obviously, good spot for trying to get stage points. I assume the strategy is to try to stay up there as long as possible. Yeah, it, it definitely opens up the window for us from a strategy standpoint as far as track position and fuel and, you know, if caution comes out, you know, and, and obviously shows that we got a fast race car and it's really important in this place. I, I think probably more than Daytona or Atlanta having a fast car. So, um, yeah, I think the ball's in our court to start with here and see how we can execute all the way through. Why? Why fast cars so much more here than Daytona or Atlanta? Uh, just because handling means the least here. Um, you know, I, I think having a fast car, you know, there, there are times where a really slow car um, kills a lane. A car that can't take a push kills a lane here. Um, whereas I, I feel like handling or, you know, some, some natural gaps kind of give more, more time to recover um, at Daytona and, uh, and Atlanta. So I think having a really fast race car is super important to, to success here and at least expected success. This is Custom Patch Hat. But what makes us custom? Well, that actually begins with you. We're just bringing your unique vision to life. No knockoffs, no lookalikes. Your design is one of a kind. We know hats, we know design, and we know quality. The proof? It's in our production. Hand stitched with precision and care, with brands you know and trust. A one of a kind patch deserves a one of a kind treatment, all the way to your doorstep. It's how we keep it custom. Steven Stump of FrontChurch.com here. Come back for more great racing videos, and if you like us, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.